I wanted to mention uh, five reasons uh, why why unbiblical dating is even practiced. Like why 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 do we even have this situation where people are in these relationships where they're not married and in these relationships for a long period of time, um, and it's and, and they're treating it like marriage. Well, number one, it's you know people who are first of all ignorant of God's word and are just blindly following the culture. So you have some people they don't know what God's word says. They don't know whether it's right or wrong. They just just everyone else has been doing this. Is just what's been done. You know, they just grow up like I said before. You know, parents are not learning about these things, not instructing their children, and people just grow up. Everyone else is getting a boyfriend and girlfriend. That's what it was like for me in high school. You know, you, you go to high school and primary school. Hey, everyone else is getting boyfriends and girlfriends. When is it? When are you going to get? You know, your parents will ask, "When are you going to have a boyfriend or girlfriend?" As though like it's just not. You're behind the times if you're not doing that. You know. So these are people that are ignorant of God's word, ignorant of what is right and wrong, and just blindly following the culture. Number two, you have people who have, who have no regard for God and the best for the past. So you have people that go into it knowing that it's wrong, but they just have no regard for what's right and wrong. They have no regard for the person that they're dating, and they're just trying to take what they can to satisfy their own sinful desires. Number three, so then you have people wanting to be in a marriage-like relationship who are not ready or willing to be married um, and have the responsibility and commitment that comes with the reward of physical intimacy. So <clears throat> it, it's not so much that they're ignorant. Um, it's not so much that they're just doing it out of selfishness or blatant regard. They just, they just want to enjoy that marriage-like relationship and have that companionship, but they're not ready or willing to make that commitment. And that often happens in our churches or in, in amongst Christian circles is they, a person starts something because they want that companionship, they want that intimacy, but they know that they're not ready to get married. Because if you ask the person, when are you going to get married? And they say, well, I don't know when I'm going to get married. That tells you they're not ready to get married. Because somebody that is ready to get married means they are ready to get married today. Right? So if somebody's trying to, st for the ladies out there, if somebody's trying to start something with you and you ask them, when would you like to get married? And they have no date in sight, they are not ready to get married. And if their date in sight, well, I'm, I'm ready to get married a year from now, then a year from now, start dating. <coughs> You know, don't start dating when you're not even ready to get married because then all these problems, like I, ex like I explained before, are going to be for that year as opposed to, you know, now I'm ready to get married, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working and whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm self-sufficient, I can take on the responsibility of a woman, now I start looking and now I start um, dating or start looking for that woman. So... If you want to, you know, to, to these people, if you want to do what married people do, and I've already said this, then get married. If you want to do what, people, what married people do. And like I said, when I say ready for marriage, I mean he is ready to be married today or in the very near future. <clears throat> See, when you're ready for marriage, this also means that you're ready to start a family. Because when you get married and you do the natural activity that husband and wife do, children will result from that. So it's not just, I'm ready to get married, but you need to be ready to be married and ready to start a family. You know, of course, unless you plan on robbing yourself of rewards by preventing yourselves from having children somehow, um, which is not, I don't think, the right thing to do. So that's number three. So it's a person who is wanting to be in that marriage-like relationship, but they know themselves that they are not ready to be married, and then they end up being in this boyfriend-girlfriend type relationship that is not progressing to marriage. Another reason is, number four, is delaying marriage unnecessarily um, for uh, plans that you have in life, you know, whether it's study or, uh, you, know, uh, you know, wanting to have a really huge wedding where it takes like two or three years to plan or even a year to plan. I mean, we can see from Gershon and Christine's experience that, you know, I mean, they put that wedding together in three months. And I'm sure they could have made it a lot more flash, you know, that's, that's probably just what they did. But, you know, it doesn't take uh, years and years to, to plan a wedding. So another reason why people find themselves in this situation because they're delaying a marriage unnecessarily for maybe study or planning a large celebration or you know, wanting to work for a couple of years or whatever reason. Your own, your own personal goals and, and, and desires. And you know, I would submit to you that, that that situation where you're in a relationship, quote unquote, and you've delayed it for some unnecessary reason is no different to the person that's not ready to get married. Because if you know, you know, I want to study, I want to finish this, 
and uh, you know, I, I want to work for a couple of years before I get married, if that was your plan and you're not willing to give that up, then you're not ready to start dating because you're not ready to get married. Until you're w ready to say, hey, I'm, 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 I'm willing to give all that up because I'm starting to go dating, I might find something, I'm going to get married, then you know, it's probably best you, you do that first rather than be in the situation where you're in this like marriage-like relationship and you have all the dangers of being in that relationship and you're putting it off for four, five, six years because you need to finish studies and then you need to um, work that job for a couple of years if that's what you want to do. <clears throat> you know, weddings don't take years to execute so I, I don't think that's a good reason to delay a marriage that long. Um, but also, you know, in that situation, I guess you're no longer really boyfriend and girlfriend if you're planning a marriage. You're really, uh, you know, fiancés. You know, you're, you're, you're just um, getting, getting uh, those things together. <clears throat> you know, and the reason why, you know, and I would say this as well, that if, you know, if you're in that, if a person is in that relationship where it's being delayed and there's already that commitment, it, you know, it's not a good idea to be in that situation for too long, even as fiancés, because the temptation is even greater to sin. You know, and um, even Ashton and I were talking about this. But you know, often people, when a person starts dating their daughter or a son starts dating, that's when everyone's on high alert, right? It's like, oh, you know, they're starting this thing and then there's the chaperones and you know, all, all these things that go into play, you know, where are you and everything like that. But do you find that almost like when people get engaged though, it's like, oh, okay, they're engaged now and, and all, the, all, the, all the limitations come off and everyone takes a step back and it's like, oh, it's fine now. You know, they're engaged, so now they can be close and now they can spend a lot of time together. But it should be the opposite way around because generally when people are starting to date, <coughs> they themselves are a bit cautious, you know, because they don't know each other, they don't know whether each other's going to commit and they're, they're, they're not going to push the boundary as far as when they get to know each other. It should be as they get to know each other better, especially when they're engaged, that's when they need to be very careful because that's when their guard is down, you know, and then you start reasoning in your own mind, well, we're going to get married anyway, so what does it matter if we kiss or if we hug? I mean, we're going to be doing that after the marriage date anyway. So there's a greater temptation to sin and to fornicate. So it should actually be the opposite way around. Like once people are engaged, that's when they need to be high, on high alert. Um, and if you do have to delay the wedding date for any reason and you are very serious with another person, I think it's wise at this time to not spend so much time together. You know, because the more time you spend together, the more chance there are you're going to do the things that you're not meant to be doing. And, you know, why not, why not make it something that both of you commit to in the sense that, hey, you know, we know we're going to get married, we want to stay pure, we want to please God, so we have an agreement of, hey, let's not see each other as often, or, you know, if we know we're really struggling, let's not see each other at all, you know, and let's just communicate via text or Facebook or whatever, and then when we, when we have our marriage, obviously you have to get together maybe to plan the wedding or whatever. I'm, I'm talking about the alone times where it's unaccounted for and, and where, where, the, where the sin actually happens, you know, if you're not seeing each other at all, it's just going to make the heart grow fonder, right? And you'll look forward to the wedding day even more. It'll be even more <coughs> a blessing to you if you can make that commitment. So if you do have to delay the wedding day, I think it's wise to limit your time together. Spend very little time together until your wedding day. And, you know, replace that time with getting busy with, with work or serving the Lord. You know, go soul winning more often instead of uh, seeing each other as often. And replace the time you spent together and it'll look, you'll look more forward to your marriage, I think as well to be a blessing to you <coughs> and it'll and it'll remove that temptation as well to sin and the last uh, thing I just want to give you here on why unbiblical dating uh, I believe is practice is oh actually no I only had four reasons the last thing is just a point a point I had about Elizabeth and I so you know I did have this sort of philosophy and mentality when I met Elizabeth um, and that's why I did things the way I did see when I met Elizabeth you know, she, she wasn't saved when we met, so the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to give her the gospel. So I spent time giving her the gospel, and after two weeks, she was saved. Now, during those two weeks, we didn't just talk about the gospel, we talked about a lot of things. We talked about, you know, children, we talked about marriage, we talked about family, we talked about where we were going to live, how our future was going to be. We talked about everything, like I talked about in my marriage sermon. So when she got saved, we talked a bit more. Really, it was just a decision of whether to get married or not. And that's why we got married so quickly because, 
you know, we, we had talked about all those things and we had figured everything out and the next step was logically, well, we better get married before we, you know, fornicate and, and, and do things that we regret. And the point I just wanted to make here was, you know, during that time when I was getting to know Elizabeth, I never actually referred to Elizabeth as my girlfriend. You know, because when we were sort of, I guess, dating, you know, we got married two months after we had met. <clears throat> I never actually referred to her as my girlfriend because I didn't, because I didn't believe in this whole boyfriend and girlfriend thing. I didn't believe, because we weren't married, I didn't, ha I didn't have any um, ownership of her, right? So I never referred to Elizabeth at this time as my girlfriend. Other people did. Other people would say, you know, you're going to go pick up your girlfriend, you're going to see your girlfriend. But to me, she was just a girl I was getting to know in order to decide whether or not to marry. So actually, Elizabeth and I went from being friends in my eyes to straight away becoming fiancés. Because a couple of weeks later when we decided to get married, then I would refer to her as my fiancé because we were planning the wedding now and we were getting married in a couple of months. So I did not actually ever refer to Elizabeth as my girlfriend, even though others did, because once we had decided to get married, we, we were fiancés. 